Hello there, uh, very good afternoon and welcome to another update on the current status of the March 2nd general and regional elections. I'm your host, Eddie Lane, and I have with me via Zoom this afternoon, Attorney Law Charles Ramson and Prime Minister-elect Brigadier Mark Phillips. Brigadier Phillips, Charles, good afternoon and welcome to the program. Good, good afternoon, to be with you, Ed. Good afternoon, it's good viewers. All right, so let's get straight into this. Um, I think it's now public knowledge in terms of the manner in which the appeals court ruled yesterday um, regarding the matter brought by the support of the APNU AFC. Um, Charles, your initial comments with regards to what transpired at the courts yesterday. Well, we should, we should not labor on the, any misapprehension whatsoever that this is anything other than another ploy uh, by the AP and UAFC to delay the swearing in, the inevitable swearing in of the, the rightful winner of this election, who is Dr. Irfan Ali and the People's Progressive Party. Now, what you would have seen today, and it's something that's gotten me really upset, and I want to get into this a little bit later, but I have to bring it to everyone's attention immediately, uh, Eddie is that we saw these orders being circulated, signed by Winston Jordan, where he has given out hundreds of acres of land to friends and family and cronies and financiers in corrupt deals uh, all across the East Coast of Guyana. And these are illegal giveaway, uh, uh, illegal give giveaway of our land these lands belong to the people of Guyana, and the hundreds of acres of land is, is prime land that has been sold without any due process whatsoever, but also it's an illegal sale because they no longer occupy the position where they can actually sell those lands. This is a wholesale uh, sale and, and, and rape of our country and our country's natural assets and resources, and all of which is being to the detriment of all Guyanese people. And it's a, it's a scandal. It's an absolute scandal. It's a downright shame. And we've got to get these lands back. And we've got to get these criminals out of power immediately. So uh, I see you bringing it up. I want to talk a little bit about uh, what was it that this AP and UAFC rigging cabal that went into the courts to try to stop the declaration from happening last Thursday. What was it that they asked the court to uh, block? Well, as you know, they would have told um, this entire country that because they have alleged fraud, then the election was fraudulent. And it turns out that uh, everyone else disagreed with them. The CARICOM uh, observers in their report disagreed with them. In fact, they said that the election was credible and that the recount should be used as the basis for the declaration of a new government, which would form a legitimate government. That is what the, the Organization of American States said. That is also what the United States have said. That's also what the Commonwealth has said. That is what the local observers have said. But the fact that uh, CARICOM has said that, it, uh, when Granger had originally called them the, the main and primary uh, interlocutors, um, and now he refuses to recognize not only that the People's Progressive Party has more votes in this election, but also refuses to recognize the CARICOM observers and the observer report. Now, what did they go to court to block? They went to court to block uh, the instruction given by Claudette Singh, the chairperson of GCOM, to make a declaration for him to present a report with the final results, which have already been counted, deemed valid, both at, for 2,000 
339 boxes uh, put into a, a statement of recount signed by the AP and UAFC, all of which put into a, a uh, district certificate as valid votes. So he was required to tabulate all of those numbers, uh, a simple tabulation, and return with that report. Uh, just before he was required to present it, they ran to court. They scurried to court like thieves in the night, once again, trying to block the recount, even though that they, would, they said originally that they would respect the, uh, the recount and what comes out of the recount. But what the court did was, number one, they never blocked the recount. And I want us, uh, if, we, if we can quickly pull up some of the things that they had asked for, Eddie, it, you, if you have that handy, I have it on my page. You can, you can grab it in the meantime while I'm explaining to everyone. The injunctions that they sought was for the uh, law and field to uh, be stopped from presenting a report and because it was not valid, the, the votes was not valid, and that uh, it, they weren't credible. Then they also asked the court to make a declaration that uh, GCOM did not make an assessment of what were valid and credible votes. So the court, in refusing their orders, in, in refusing their applications, had said to them that your injunctive orders that you sought, we refused to give them to you. And the declaration that you sought, which was that GCOM did not do what it was supposed to do in assessing the valid votes, that we refused to give that to you, which means that law and field is still required to present his report as per the instructions from Claudette Singh. And uh, the only thing that the court did actually was when interpreting the word, the words more votes cast, they inserted the word to mean valid votes cast. Well, of course, it means valid votes cast. You cannot get elected on invalid votes. So it was essentially a waste of time for uh, the AP and UAFC to, to take that to court. And this is a huge loss for the AP and UAFC, despite their, their uh, attempts at being uh, jolly full. It is a silly way of misleading their supporters once again. And as you pull the screen up, as you can, I can help just read what they have asked for. This is what they asked for, Eddie. A declaration that the Guyana Elections Commission has failed to act in accordance with the terms of the order at number 6 of 2020, and that it's failed to determine a final credible count and or the credibility of the result of the general and regional elections. The court refused that order. Click over, uh, Eddie, so let's go through a couple of the others. And this one is the only one which they said that they, instead of the Constitution saying that it's more votes cast, they say more valid votes. Well, we knew that all along. You didn't need to go to court to, to, for you to determine that you can only be elected on valid votes. And here is where they have a big problem, Eddie, that they are telling their supporters that it's valid, credible votes. But the order was released today. The order was released today. And what does the order say? The order says that it, the interpretation of the Constitution is to mean valid votes for the election. And that's the end of the story. There is no reference to the order, order number 60. And so that even though they were begging this court to insert credible votes in there, and yesterday they had a, a press release from the a, on their page saying that it means valid, credible votes, even the Court of Appeal uh, refused them. Just quickly, let's go through these, the, the, the important parts of these uh, two other applications. They wanted to, to get an injunction on Loyan Fields to stop him from complying with the direction of the chairperson of, of GCOM with the letter that he received. 
that was refused, which, mean he, which means he is still required to present that report to follow that instruction, that direction that the chairperson has given to him. Uh, click to the other one, Eddie. In this one, they wanted an injunction uh, stopping Lowingfield from complying with the chairperson once again in that, for these particular reasons, that, that the commission that did not determine the final credible count or the credibility of the result of the election. Again, the court refused that. So, uh, and then the, the last one, if you click, the last two ones are important too. They wanted an injunction stopping Lowenfield from presenting uh, uh, the report because they, it, they did not contain votes which were credible. They refused that order as well. The final one. Be they wanted to stop uh, Lowenfield from submitting this report because the, it, the votes were not valid and credible. So because all of these orders were refused, this was a huge loss for the APNU AFC. And, and it now places uh, the responsibility and the obligation for Lowenfield to present that report with the tabulated votes that were done uh, at the recount, because all of those votes which form part that had been certified all of those votes are valid votes, and that leads to the election of the People's Progressive Party and for the, uh, Dr. Irfan Ali to become president of Guyana. Uh, Brigadier, I want to bring you in here. Um, we have seen the theatrics of AP and UAFC from, from even before the, the commencement of the recount exercise. Um, and their attempts, of course, using Mingo to rig the elections um, and now trying to use in the first instance, they attempted to use uh, Lowenfield and now somehow seem to be using the court. Um, this clearly seems to be an attempt to get back into office on the basis of technicalities and not uh, by the ballots where people would have voted for you because the results of the elections are proved differently. It proved that the PPPC would have won the elections by more than 15,400 uh, votes. Um, and in this attempt now with using the Lowenfield figures uh, trying to give themselves a two-third major, uh, two majority? Well, <coughs> Ed and Charles, um, thank you for having me on the program. The only person or organization for the APNU AFC to get angry with, to get vexed with now, is the court. And I think what will happen it will take some time for them to understand the ruling as was eloquently explained by Mr. Charles Ramson just now, because you know they have a problem with maths and we, we find out now that they have a problem with English language. Okay, so they had jollification yesterday afternoon and last night, but I guess by now they're coming to the realization that they have lost because the only thing that happened yesterday, based on my layman's knowledge, is that the judges agree to include valid. You know, include the word valid when it was necessary. Okay? Everything that they asked for under the laws there, you know, was refused, as you showed just now. And that is what I want the Guyanese people to understand. That you're dealing with, you're dealing with a political organization that lost the election on the second the election of the second of March. By the third of March, close to business, right? That's by four or five in the afternoon on the third of March, they knew that they lost this election. These elections. They knew that. Because you know what? We knew that we won it. We knew that we won the elections by close to business the third of March. So they, they knew because all of us were using the same statement of polls. Okay? And, you know, I want to really speak to the supporters, the blind supporters. Because I know there are supporters out, out there of the AP and UFC. 
who fully well aware that the AP and new AFC lost these elections a long time ago, over 100 days ago. And they're the ones who are silent, the ones who are vocal, the ones who are going to go on the streets with a placard in their hand or to wind up and bend over and do all kind of vulgar um, actions are the ones who are not taking time to understand what happened. You know, I posted on my Facebook page this morning, and you could go to my Facebook page and see the comments that they have. A simple thing I posted, and I will read it. The total valid votes is 460,352. The PPPC won by 15,000. 416 valid votes. And you could see the comments from some people who profess to be educated. You know, they're even making racial comments, you know. But the point is, the time has come for the leadership of the APNU AFC. And when I say the leadership, I'm talking about starting with Mr. Brigadier retired David Granger, right, to hold the same rank like me at the time of retirement. The time has come for him to go public. Notwithstanding, they're, they're going to wait on, on GCOM to make a declaration, which is more ceremonial than anything else. Because the knowledge out there, the knowledge is in the public domain. The PPPC won the elections. They have the amount of votes they wanted by. I don't have to repeat that. We went through a recount. All the reports are in. It's time for Mr. Granger to lead in the interest of peace and stability in this country. It's time for him to go to the mic. Take the mic and tell the people of Guyana, my party, my coalition, the APNU AFC, lost these elections, and I'm conceding defeat. And that will bring peace to Guyana. That will bring peace to Guyana, not to continue to you know, fool the people. It's not, it's not fun and lies telling them what, what I'm repeating right now. OK? So if you don't want to listen to me, at least listen to your son-in-law. Yeah? Listen to your son-in-law. Right? And let us have a proper legacy for him. Because another five years, another 25 years, another 100 years, when the political history of Guyana is written, right, we want it to be correctly stated that Mr. Granger, notwithstanding the fact that he held out for over 100 days, has finally conceded that he lost the election. He's finally conceded defeat. This is all this country needs now. We don't need another court case, right? I know Charles is going to explain why we're going to the CCJ, but the CC, we're going to the CCJ not pertaining to the results, which is already there, which is already public. It's in the interest <clears throat> of safeguarding statutes of Guyana. That's my understanding why we're going to the CCJ. The, the results of the recount, everybody under the sun, every organization in the world is pleading with the APNU AFC to respect the will of the people by honoring the results of the recall. You know, these are people who study law, just like Charles. These are people who study international relations. These are people who study political science. I study defense and security. And I can tell you our national interests our natural, national interest is pursued by the diplomatic ties and relationship that we foster with these same organizations that we're fighting against. You know, CARICOM, the OAS, right? The Commonwealth. These are organizations that we pursue our national interest through the European Union. Only last week on a town hall meeting, Mr. Carl Greenidge, who's one of their own, mentioned the fact that Guyana's defense and security 
right? The fourth line is diplomacy. The fourth line for defense and security is diplomacy. How can we, with regards to an election and political stability, refuse the advice, refuse the support, the moral support of these organizations when it comes to respecting the will of how can we refuse them, but at the same time want them to embrace us when it comes to defending the sovereignty of Guyana? And we have a case coming up on the thirtieth. Okay, and we will expect all those organizations to follow the case and to be very supportive of, of Guyana. I'm talking about the case pertaining to our border before the international court. Okay, these are the same organizations that we hold on to and we try to pursue our national interest as it pertains to sovereignty true. And yet on an issue of respecting the will of the people within our jurisdiction, within the Republic of Guyana, the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, we are willing to ignore the pleading of these organizations. Come on, Mr. Granger. You are the leader. You are the intellectual author of what is going on in Guyana today. And you have to take a stand. Take the mic, tell the people, tell your supporters, tell your leadership that we have lost these elections. This is not no issue for another court case. By now, I'm disappointed by now, GCOM, had they continue on the trajectory they were on last week, by now they would have declared the winner of these elections. And perhaps by now you'd have had the swearing of the new president, Dr. Irfan Ali. But then you start with a court case, you become another court case now, at this 11 and a half hour, at the time when all of Guyana is waiting with bated breath, right? to accept that the will of the people has prevailed, democracy has prevailed, and yet again, another court case, and we have to wait another few days. What are you doing to the leadership of Guyana, the people of Guyana? You know, what is, what is the leadership of the AP and UAFC doing to the people of Guyana? They're heartless. They don't have the interest of the people of Guyana at heart. They have their own interests. They're playing with time. They're biding time so they could sign those agreements, those are legal agreements where people are getting kickbacks. And it's instructive that you mention the area of the land on the East Coast and on the East Bank. And I'm aware that those areas are land that already earmark for the continuation of low income housing for the poor people of Guyana. So this, this, this coalition has no interest in the needs of the poor people of Guyana, the working class. They don't have any interest in them. It's the PPP Civic that gave out over 50,000 house lots and, and build houses. They didn't do that. They're selling house lots and they're selling acres of land to the rich people who will then take it and develop it and sell to other rich people. What the PPP would have done with those land, I'm happy that it's happening now, right? At a time where we could still repossess after taking office. The PPP, as you know, is interested in continuing the low income housing program for the people of Guyana. And that is what the supporters of the coalition must understand when they try and to allow the leadership of the coalition to blindly lead them down a rabbit hole. Ask their leaders to concede so development can take place under the PPPC government that won these elections. That is my contribution. Brigadier, thanks. Um, Charles, along the same lines, um, the fact that, and if you can probably explain for the public to understand uh, the basis of this argument that the APNU AFC is making um, with regards to technicalities, the, the possibility of them winning the elections, quote unquote, by technicalities. Um, I think using that one word, valid uh, votes. 
All right. So I want before I do, I want to pick up on something quickly that uh, uh, the Prime Minister elect has just said about David Granger doing the honorable thing and doing the right thing. Um, we, I have seen enough of David Granger over the last five years to make me know and be convinced that there's nothing honorable about him and that he is the chief cook and bottle washer when it comes to this entire uh, rigging affair. And that one of the reasons why this uh, non-concession has not happened in since the recount has been concluded is because he knew of all the plans and that he did nothing to stop it. That's number one. Number two, um, even Bautista from Suriname, after a recount was done, conceded to the main opposition party to have them win the election. And guess what? Bautista was convicted for murder, was wanted all around the world uh, by Interpol and a number of other for, for crimes. David Granger is now making Bautista look good by conceding to election to uh, the opposition have, after having known that they would have lost the election. There's nothing honorable about David Granger, and I would like him to prove me wrong, but I know that when he did that interview with Chronicle days before uh, Claudette Singh was expected to make that announcement about whether she was going to annul the election or ask Lowenfield to present his report, he attempted to prejudicially uh, affect the outcome of that uh, decision by asking her to annul the election. A head of state doing an interview, asking her to annul the election. That is a totally improper use of office. And the, the fact that he can go and do an interview to uh, say a lot of the things that he said during that interview, to say that fraud occurred, but never mentioned the real fraud that occurred that was exposed right in front of his eyes uh, was the fraud of Mingo. He never mentions the word Mingo and he praises uh, Lowenfield, even though Lowenfield himself was involved in the fraudulent operation with the Mingo Declaration. He was also one of the key uh, architects of seeing that the place gets, gets locked down, that Lo Mingo goes into hiding, that the police comes in and pushes us out of the building. He praises this individual uh, for his work. So when anyone wants to come and tell me that David Ranger is this honorable individual, I've seen enough of him over the last five years. He's breached the constitution. He attempted to kidnap my wife and three persons died in the process. And when he was asked for a comment, he said it was a legitimate state operation. No apologies to anyone, no inquest, no charging of anyone. The, the entire affair, sordid affair, was shoved under the rug. That is not the work of an honorable man. If you are an individual where you had made a mistake, as he claimed he did, where they attempted to arrest or detain an individual, but then pursued them in this high-speed car chase and some and threatened their life. And three persons died in the process, two of whom were working for you. And you claim that this was a legitimate state operation and that, that there's no need for an investigation. Those were his words, quote unquote. You're telling me that a, a Guyanese person dies uh, innocently, there's no need for an investigation. You're telling me that two persons died in the course of a, of a state authorized and sanctioned operation where you're, you're chasing the opposition MP's wife and there's not, not even a, an apology, let alone a, a, an investigation and, and anyone could come and tell me that he is an honorable man. 
he's anything but honorable. And we are going to have to wring this, uh, the power out of his hand, and we are going to do it. The forces of, of removing power from the AP and new AFC are so strong and energized and so formidable that we are not going to rest at any point in time. All our entire team is fighting all the way to the end. The reason why we are taking this to the CCJ is so that we don't want any more stupid litigation coming up to delay what is the rightfully elected government in this country. It is already coming on to four months, Eddie. People have their lives on hold as a result of this corrupt rigging cabal. These bullies who are refusing to give up power. But I want you to know that they are not going to succeed, Eddie. I want all the Guyanese people to know and all the people who are standing for democracy in this country that we're not running out of strength. We're not running out of energy. We're not running out of will. We're not getting tired. We're not getting frustrated. We knew that you had all of this plan. All of what you were seeing here, we contemplated everything that you have here. That is why you saw the CCJ application. It was so quick. It was quick because it was drafted before. It was drafted before because we knew that you were coming with court proceedings to attempt to block this, the, the swearing, the rightful swearing in of Dr. Irfan Ali and the People's Progressive Party. So we are not running out of energy and the steam and the, and the aggression and the will and the courage and the support, Eddie. All around the world, we are getting the support. All around uh, uh, in Guyana, we are getting the support, even from people who are known to be supporters of the AP and UAFC. Let me tell you a story, Eddie. When the, on what day was it? Last week, Tuesday, I think, when Claudette Singh made the decision that she was going to uh, announce the declaration on Thursday or requested uh, Law Field to prepare the report so that she could make the declaration on Thursday. We started getting calls from a lot of AP and UAFC supporters calling us to congratulate us because they are all so fed up. They want to move on. And honest people who just want a chance to get on with their lives, they want this, to, this, this entire saga to come to an end. And the AP and UAFC are totally mistaken if they believe that we are running out of energy and the will to fight for this. We have been fighting for five years, okay? Every single day we have been fighting for five years. And everything that we have been saying has turned out to be true. While on the other hand, everything that they're telling their supporters are turning out to be false. So make no mistake, Eddie, we are going to pursue this to the end. The reason, as, as you asked me, why is it that the, the, we're filed the litigation is that we don't want this issue to be left unsettled so that they could try to block the swearing in again. We're going to pursue it to the end, and we're going to do it gladfully because at every single step that they make, we are going to, uh, going to come to them, and we are going to outmaneuver them as we have been doing for the last almost four months, because we've been hearing about swearing in, uh, Eddie. We've been hearing about the blow, blow, blow. We've been hearing about uh, the, how much suits they got ready and how they want to go and do this and what's going to happen afterwards. And yet still, this man is now being called the sanctimonious gangster in the entire Caribbean. Go take the time, Eddie. Go on Google right now and type in Rigging president. And you know what picture is going to come up? David Granger. I swear to you it's true. If, if When this program is finished, for all of our viewers out there, and even the ones who are, who are just viewing this out of interest and just want to support democracy, just to show the entire world how they view David Granger, how the world views David Granger already. Go to Google and type in Reagan president and click images and you will see what comes up. A what picture a of David Granger. Look, look, <laughs> show them the word. 
the Brigham president, David Granger. This is Google. Google, which is the fountain of knowledge. Mark, uh, even Google, which is the fountain of knowledge. No, what it a shows legacy. <laughs> they know already, right? And if, if you're right, if he is going to, when the history is written, because he's a historian, but he likes to rewrite history, uh, Mark. He likes to rewrite history. But when the history is written, the real history is written, it's either he remains as a disciplined president or he remains as somebody who Uh, and conceded. But this is not new for the PNC, uh, Mark. I just want to make this one point quickly because, you know, we had this large scale giveaway of land. This is not the first time that they've done that. In fact, you would remember, you're, you're old enough to remember, Mark, that during the late 90s, um, the, the early 90s, before the People's Progressive Party came into power on the free and fair elections. There was this deal called the Lord B. Beaverbrook deal with the Emerald Woods. Yes, yes. When he sold off over a million acres of timberland for about 16, no, about 9 million pounds. And then a week later or a month later, this individual called Lord Beaverbrook from, in, from England, he sold that back to a Dutch company. Million pounds. Yes. Okay. So it's all GTT as a viable business, a profitable business. It was, I think, back then it was called ATN or something like that. But anyway, sold it for about uh, sixteen million US dollars. Even though gt and was making a profit of over $4 million every single year, and they had in their bank account over $400 million Guyana dollars, Mark. They had yeah, in their GTC. bank account over $400 million Guyana dollars as account receivables. And they sold this company for $16 million. And the, the gt and which is known today, was left with all of that money, another corrupt deal. This is symptomatic of the PNC giveaway deals so that they could enrich their political cronies and their elites. You saw you, the recent report, um, Abina Rockcliffe just did a, a, a piece. It said if it was two words that are going to come to be the, 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 the words that describes the AP and UAFC, it's going to be signed away because you would remember the oil deal which was signed away it gave away over 55 billion US dollars of, of resources, of our money that over uh, in that deal. This is what is going to be happening now. They're holding on to power now so that they could personally enrich themselves. Meanwhile, their supporters, they get nothing. They barely even get some food to come and protest. It's a downright shame. Eddie, are you there? Not hearing you yet. All right, I muted. I muted there um, to give Charles a chance to go. Um, I, I could have felt the passion. Um, <laughs> you know how deep this it's is. Time to uh, be passionate, you, Eddie. Um, this is the time I mean, to be passionate. It is. It is certainly time. Uh, let us talk, though, Charles. When you look at the sum total of this, uh, maybe I start with you, Brigadier. You look at the sum total of what is happening. All these excuses, all these attempts to delay and derail a process, which has, has clearly shown that you lost the elections. Um, you know, you, you tried to find technicalities to hold on to office. And by the way, it, it is strange that, you know, APNU should, be, should be ashamed of themselves, that they cannot win the elections by the ballot. The people have rejected them. And they are now moving to use technicalities to say, um, valid votes and, and, and invalid votes to disenfranchise over 270,000 people to hand themselves a two-thirds majority win in the National Assembly. The people who were supposed to elect you have rejected you and you're trying to use the courts and to use uh, make a low and field and to use technicalities 
to hold on to power. But why all of this? Why all of this? You hinted earlier, um, Brigadier, you also spoke briefly about it. The corruption, the corrupt deals, um, that may seem to be the reason why this, this thirst to hold on to power. Um, let, me, let me start with you, Brigadier. Well, it's quite obvious why they're trying to hold on to power. As Charles mentioned, as many other commentators mentioned, I mentioned before, if you hold on to power, you control the forces, you know, you control the resources, right? And therefore you could dole out um, money, business opportunities, you know, and resources to your cronies, right? That's a, that's a layman's answer to this whole thing. But the reality is the longer they hold on to power, the longer they deny the will of the people, we as a whole country suffers. We have a, we have a pandemic that is affecting Guyana, COVID-19. We have an emerging disaster situation, floods all over the country, especially in region nine, you know, affecting a lot of people, okay? We have an economy that is getting worse with each passing day. And this government has no interest in addressing in an effective manner these issues that are affecting Guyana. What they're doing is trying to cling on to power. And that's why we need to transition to the rightfully elected government like yesterday. So the government, the rightfully elected government, the legitimate government can deal with these issues affecting Guyana, deal with COVID-19 effectively, right? Deal with the flood situations, the management of those disasters, right? That are popping up all over Guyana, right? Deal with getting this country economically viable again. They are not going to do that because their efforts is towards holding on to power and to doling out whatever they can give at the last minute to their cronies, right? So we need GCOM, and I know GCOM is meeting today, and I hope GCOM can meet and continue their work so we can have a declaration of what we already know. This is just a ceremonial declaration. We already know the results. But the law says GCOM must declare it. So we were waiting for GCOM to make the declaration so we could swear in our new president, Dr. Irfan Ali, and we could start making decisions and taking actions in the interest of the people of this country. People have been suffering for a long time. The people have been suffering, if I can go back, since the December 2018. Some will argue that they were suffering before from, from, the, fifth, from the 11th of May 2015. Some will argue that people have been suffering. But the reality is that since this government lost the no confidence motion and decide that they will hold on to power at all costs. They went to the CCJ, the CCJ rebuked them, right? You know, we had elections, the people rebuked them. The people voted for the PPPC, right? And every international, regional, and sub-regional organization that Guyana is a member of is pleading with this government to respect the will of the people. Unless they respect the will of the people, there's the only way this country can be rescued. We will have oil out there and what will be happening, right? The money from the oil will go into an account and go into an account and just keep going into account. And the people of Guyana will not see anything because we don't have a legitimate government. So again, I'm calling on Mr. David Granger Right, you have a last chance, a last chance to rescue your legacy. Stop the shenanigans and do the right thing. Be a statement. At this last opportunity, be a statement because the history will say, notwithstanding the rigging and the attempts over a year and a half, he finally conceded defeat. You know. Let the people breed. I know somebody said I shouldn't use the word breed 
because it could be offenses in this climate. But I, I am saying, concede defeat and let the people of Guyana breed. I will take the criticism that comes with that. Brigadier, thanks. Um, I'll bring you in, in here now, Charles. Um, why, why are they holding on? I mean, that, that may be the question in the minds of many people. There, there are several reasons why they're holding on, Eddie. Number one, they're scared to death, right? <laughs> they're scared to death of what's going to be the consequences for themselves personally, because you see all these land deals that we're seeing here. This is only the tip of the iceberg. I've spoken about a number of things already, and the party and our general secretary have spoken about a number of deals that we've all, we already know about. People who are putting uh, hundreds of thousands of US dollars in their account and sending it overseas. We know about the, the, the minister in Eccles who had somebody front for her front for her to sell land for a, a million US dollars. We know about the deals. So they're holding on for dear life because they, some of them are scared to death. That's number one. Number two, some of them are holding on because now they're getting a chance to do some additional creaming because they know that they're not going to be able to touch state power for a very long time. Because while it is the case that, the, that uh, the PNC may represent a constituency, the individuals who are holding themselves out to represent the constituency, they're the ones that are not going to be able to, to hold state power again. Because all they have done is fatten their pockets for themselves and for their cronies. We've seen it. We have seen it. We have seen them come in on the basis of... of uh, re rebalancing things in the society. They've said that to many of their, their constituencies and many of their supporters. But in turn, all they've done is fatten themselves, fatten their pockets. And the same people who they used to call corrupt while they were in opposition, they was it's their best friends now. They used to call Brian to worry all the time in being a corrupt individual and it's, it's, it's um, Part best friend, etc. And look who's his best friend now, Joseph Harmon. Joseph Harmon attending all the birthdays and buying this and building this. And we know about the individuals who built houses for the contractors who built houses and all their yards and all their, 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 all their terrazzo floor and everything else they're doing there. Really <laughs> nice enough, this help. Um, and he's holding on to so that they can get more work. Listen, look at that, that, that ugly monstrosity that is going on there at, at, um, at Ocean View. That is over a billion dollars that they're spending there of our money. And, and they, we don't even have the severity of cases of COVID-19 that you're going to end up with uh, persons there. And then I saw Dr. Frank Anthony uh, disclose some information that shows it's not only that we have, the state has acquired this property, it is that they are acquiring it building it over and paying huge amounts of rent in turn. So the, the owner is getting a double uh, benefit as a result. And we know the individual and who he is and how close he is to the, the party. This is the drug bond scandal all over again. But I, I'm not surprised because you know who's the person in charge of the Ministry of Health. So uh, uh, the days that they're holding on here, is the day so that they could, in Guyana terms, as we are called, canon. They want, they look into canon. We cannot allow them to steal our resources anymore. Guyana, we have to stop them. We are going to make sure that they hear that this is the end for them. And the 10 people that they could put out in the streets to dance and parade, and they've been doing every and ever so often in the last three months and up to now david granger can't get sworn in you, that is the the end of the road for you because if it is the case that this country believed you when you said that these there was 
any kind of fraud in the election other than Mingo. They would have been out in the street supporting you. They would have already been out on the street supporting you because it would have been in effect the, the denial of the will of the people. But the reason why the street is so calm, there is no appetite for any kind of protestation uh, as a result of your allegations is because the Guyana is not stupid anymore. There, might, there may be some individuals who will buy your line, hook line, hook, your line, hook line and sinker, but the Guyana of 1970, the 1980, and even up to the 1990s is a totally different Guyana now. When we could pull up Google and see all of the information in front of our, our eyes, including who is the Reagan president, when, when the independent media is here and can do all of the assessments to see whether it is true that the discipline services didn't vote, they, that showed they, along with everyone else, showed that that was a lie. Because they said that the discipline services didn't count, their votes didn't count, over 8,000 of them, and it turns out that the rejected ballots, of which were unstamped, Eddie, it was only about 500. Only 500 unstamped ballots. The, then they said that they had all these dead persons voted. Guess how many death certificates that they, they would have submitted? 40, 40 or 45. And then all these thousands and thousands of people that they claimed were not in the country who voted on election day, the total number of persons that they submitted to GCOM asking for the chief elections officer to verify that they were in the country, guess how many there were? 517. That is the extent of the al allegations and the anomalies. That is nothing in comparison to the 460,000 votes which were deemed valid and counted in the process. And why that's important, because the APC is floating from the confused camp. They want to keep it valid and credible. But silly guys, valid is credible. Valid votes are credible votes. That is what valid means, and that is what credible means to the extent of uh, the validity of their votes. And the confusion in the entire operation is that it's not that the votes have to be valid, it's that there must be a valid credible count. What is a valid credible count? A valid credible count is that you have five five, you can have We seem to be losing you there, Charles. The valid credible count is you are tabulating and counting. We seem, are, you we seem to be are, are, are you got me back as yet? Yeah, you're back. You're back now. We were losing you there. Are you? you, you how about you now? It's a, valid. I, I, if it's valid now, are you here now, Eddie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just so that we're clear, to determine a final credible count is to tabulate the valid votes. And what are valid votes? Valid votes means votes which are not invalid. And how do you get to invalid votes? By looking at what the representations of people access. And it says very clearly what's an invalid vote. If it doesn't have the six digit stamp, if you put two, two more than one X, if your intention can't be sure, if there's no X, all of those things means an invalid vote. So all along, we're counting valid votes. So we don't have to determine what are valid, credible votes. We have to determine a final, credible count. What is a final, credible count? The correct calculation of valid votes because when Mingo did his calculation, you ended up with the incorrect calculation of valid votes. That is why you, it is correct to say that if you want a final credible count, it must mean that if you add up all of the 10 
certificates, the certified uh, results of the 10 districts, when you put it into a calculator, it must be equal to an exact number. That is what it means by coming to a final credible count, that you must use the correct arithmetic. Not that the votes have to be credible. It's not that the votes have to come alive and assume a personality that is, is, creates the credibility over time. It, the vote just has, has to be valid, which is what we have been calculating all along. They don't understand maths and they don't understand English. And that is the reason why we are in this situation here where they're going to the CJ to determine what does majority of votes mean and what does the calculation of valid votes mean. Charles, I want to thank you very much for joining me uh, today. Uh, Brigadier Phillips as well, uh, thanks for being part of the program and to our viewers. We want to say uh, thanks for joining us. Of course, we're going to be back here maybe sometime around three uh, to give you another update um, and to bring you any other information that may become available as we continue to follow this process, um, which has been running for quite a while now. And uh, we do hope that this entire process can come to an end uh, pretty soon. So again, gentlemen, I say thanks for joining us and to our viewers, have a good rest of the afternoon. Brigadier, you wanted to... Thank you, Ed. And I'd like to say to our viewers that we have 460,352 valid votes. Thanks, gentlemen. Of which we got 233,000 valid votes, 15,000 <laughs> more valid votes than the AP and UAFC. <laughs> that in the pipe and spoke it. And just let me, let me before we close off, let me, Lowenfield cannot present any other report then he is instructed to prepare. And if he disobeys that instruction, he must be fired immediately. In that other is words, what the field cannot tamper with the valid votes. <laughs> That's right. Gentlemen, thanks.